Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the toolbox. Now, if you're jumping in and out of many applications during your workday, the toolbox is supposed to make your life a lot easier. I got to play with this model, the toolbox Neo, for a couple of weeks to see if it could keep up with my own day-to-day -day workflow. Uh, so if you wanna see how things went, keep watching. Okay, so what do we got? Uh, it comes nicely packaged. It's the Toolbox Neo. And let's see what we get inside. Obviously, we've got a quick start guide that's probably gonna be handy to read. Some safety instructions. Okay, USB cable. And the Toolbox itself. So, yeah, look, it's a nice, small, compact device, USB-C connecting, a lot of buttons and dials that we can assign various shortcuts to. And let's just have a quick look at the, the quick start guide. It says, please visit toolboxtech.com and download the latest Toolbox console application. Well, why don't we go ahead and do that now? Toolbox uh, software, and we want the Windows version, so it's a simple install thing. I agree, install. Why don't we go ahead and plug this thing in? So we'll click on the icon here and see if this recognizes toolbox is connecting. Please wait. All right, there it is. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the default. We've got uh, presets here for Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere, Premiere Color. Interesting, but nothing else. Now I don't tend to use Photoshop, I use Krita, I don't use Premiere, I use DaVinci Resolve. What we wanna do is to at least have a program that we can assign some shortcut keys to. So I'm just gonna go back to the website because I think I saw, yep, there it is. Under downloads, there are some presets. Let's see what we've got here. Ah, look, we've got DaVinci Resolve. So let's just download that one and let's go to import presets. Uh, I'm just gonna go to where I downloaded those presets and we've got Resolve. I'm gonna give this a name, Resolve Edit. So I'm gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve now and see how it performs with some of the presets I just downloaded. Here's an edit that I've recently had open and some of the functions that I need are assigned to my L key to play and if I double tap L or triple tap it will speed play and the reverse is assigned to J and then K is our stop. I can control plus and control minus to zoom in and out and then shift Z will give me all of the timeline. Now let's zoom in here control plus and let's roll back using my J key to a point where I want to say split a clip. Now there is a shortcut key, control B, which will automatically split the clip without me having to mouse. And so usually my method of editing is split the clip, play to where I want it split again, stop, and I can go control B, split again. Uh, then I've got to do a ripple edit. And usually it's a select and hit delete to do a ripple edit. Now let's see if all of that can be handled by the toolbox. I've got a button here just below this uh, middle knob here and that will bring up my toolbox presets based on the uh, software that I'm using. What do we have here? We've got basically the overview, the main ones. We've got J, L play forward, uh, scrub, scrub right, okay. Uh, timeline expand, timeline shrink, but it doesn't seem to have a zoom everything. We've got some in and out points, blade tool, that could be cool. Uh, and then we can get specific. We can go, okay, so what's the rotation? There's a few that are not set, so we could probably set some there. And for this knob over here, this dial, as well as these buttons, We've got uh, top, split it, play hit. Okay, so this must be our edit function. Side is our undo, that's handy. And then we've got some combinations, which is really good. So let's see what we've got here. Um, I'll sort of call out the buttons that I'm pressing. I'm gonna to try to keep my hand off the mouse as much as possible, and I shouldn't be using the keyboard at all. I should just be using the functions that are available to me here. So let's, uh, if, if I'm rolling backwards and forwards on this middle knob, this should zoom in and out, as you're seeing here. 
And if I use this, this rotator backwards and forwards, here's what it looks like on the screen. So if I'm, I'm scrolling, I just a little bit, it'll hit play. But if I go up fast, you'll see that there's a 16 times. If I go right up, I can go 64 times speed and hit K to stop by pressing uh, back and I can scroll backwards as well. Okay, let's zoom up here so we can see this. If I hit the up arrow, uh, I'm going back in time. So sort of like going to a previous cut. Uh, I'll, I'll zoom out here so we can see this, right? And the down arrow goes down the timeline, up the timeline, and then the left and right goes in 10 second increments backwards and forwards. And this dial here actually allows me to go up and down per frame, scrolling backwards and forwards on this dial. Okay, that's, that's, that's all, all pretty intuitive. So apparently this, this top button here, huh, doesn't seem to do any cut, um, but that's supposed to be the cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the toolbox here and under Resolve Edit, if I go over here to Presets and I click, okay, there we go, we've got Split at Head. I can possibly click on this and edit the shortcut, which I know is Command B or Control B. So I'm gonna go Control B and OK that. Now this should, yep, okay, so that's been reassigned to Control B. Um, in terms of the knob, I've got the Timeline Expand, Timeline Shrink, but the press isn't assigned anything. And I don't see anything for Shift Z, which compresses the entire timeline. So I'm going to click on that. And over here, I'm gonna go Shift Z, Fit Timeline, okay that. Okay, so now I've assigned two new controls to the toolbox, which should now work uh, in here. So let's uh, scroll back and let's put in a cut. Okay, there's a split. Let's scroll forward and let's put in a cut. Now, I'm just going to see what the edit, ripple delete to the left, ripple delete to the right. Now, uh, you know, I wanna do some ripple deletes. So obviously I wanna ripple delete what I just did. So I'm going to click and, so that doesn't work. So I'm gonna undo that last cut. Let's try this again. Yep, there we go. Okay, so I get it, I get it. Let's undo this process. Okay, so if I went and I wanted to take out this section, I would put the cut there go to where I want it cut, and instead of hitting another cut, I go big button, cut, and that does the ripple delete for me. That saves a lot of time. I think I, I really like this method. All right, so uh, let's see uh, what else. The, the other assigned key was the shift Z, which was going to be pressing this knob here, and that should, yep, there we go. We've got to zoom in, zoom out, and pressing a knob to zoom everywhere. All my major functions are now assigned, and as I go, I know that there's gonna be other functions that I need, such as, you know, uh, maybe put in a marker, or I have to mute a track or something like that. And it's good to know that I can just open up the Toolbox console and assign it by pressing the button. Now, of course, uh, what about a program that isn't uh, set up, say, like Blender? Could we assign some shortcut keys to some Blender functions. Well, why don't we try that out? Here is a new Blend file. The thing about Blender is that it's already got a lot of shortcuts that you can customize yourself. And so it is good to have like a cheat sheet or if there's some shortcuts that you're used to using in a certain part of Blender, um, you might wanna go along and assign them as they go. But let's see if the toolbox can handle me creating a new preset. I'll bring up the Toolbox interface and let's create a new preset and we'll call this Blender. Customize preset, okay, we'll just go create. All right, no link, let's link it. Because Blender is open, I can assign that to Blender. And now nothing is set for now. So uh, let's go into Blender and let's say we wanted to, uh, I don't know, do an orbit. Orbiting is zero will take us out of camera view. Numpad five will toggle us between isometric and perspective. Six and four will rotate left and right. Eight and two will rotate up and down. One is front view, three is side view, seven is uh, top view. Let's figure this out logically. Uh, what have we got on our device. Well, we've got up, down, side, side. That would be good for scrolling. Maybe we could use the side button to modify those things because how would we get 
front side back and toggling between camera view and viewport. Going back to my desktop here, uh, if we go up, we want to assign a numpad here. So let's say up gives us numpad eight. Let's okay that. Great. Down, numpad two. Side, uh, left, numpad four. Right, click on that, numpad six. The knob, okay, so if we pressed the knob, could we toggle between numpad, okay, number, numpad zero should toggle. And so now, how would we assign our three views, top, side, we have four actually, top, side, front, and perspective. And so maybe if we went side, that could be top, that one would have to be top view, right? So we go, okay for that. That one could be side view, numpad three, all right. Um, down could be front view, numpad one. And left could be perspective view, numpad five. Right. The reason I'm doing the viewport is because uh, on some devices, you don't have the numpad. And Blender has sort of um, got this emulation setting for shorter keyboards, such as MacBook Pros, or if you're using it on a device where you've got like a portable keyboard or stuff like that. So I could see the logic of using the tour box to orbit your view. And then you could basically use your keyboard, mouse, and then the tour box as your view rotation device. Uh, let's try this. Okay, front, side, perspective view. Okay, I see another function, zoom in, zoom out. That'd be really, really handy to assign to the tour box. So let's, uh, let's see if we can do that as well. Dial and press. So uh, we can go mouse, uh, scrolling up, and that would be back, and then mouse scroll down uh, and what what happens when we press maybe the press should be numpad zero yeah if, if, if we do just these controls then we can probably assign something different to that and so that that has a press so basically I'm just sort of thinking out loud here um, but it's it's a logic that I can build on and this shows you just how versatile this device is when assigning your own custom key sets and you can do this in any way that you want so let's test this new thing out so that's camera okay that toggles between perspective view that zooms in and out beautiful uh, we can orbit nice uh, and then we can go into front top side view and we can still zoom in and out so now what about the nuts and bolts, okay? Um, is it worth buying? How much is it? 169, I believe this is in US dollars, uh, and it's free shipping anywhere worldwide. You know what, for my money, that's not bad. So overall, my experience with the Toolbox Neo has been really positive. Uh, I, I think it's, it's more feature rich and versatile than I had initially expected it. To be. So if you've been looking for a device like this, or uh, you now suddenly think that you might need something like this for your own workflow, uh, there's a link in the notes below that you can uh, follow through to the Toolbox Tech page. Uh, that's all for me for today. If you like what you saw here and you want to subscribe to my channel, just hit that subscribe button. And if you're feeling a little generous, uh, why not head over to Patreon? It's the support I get on Patreon that makes the production of these videos possible. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye for now.